Ich kann nicht unterscheiden. Steven. Ob ich wach bin oder träume. Das muss schwierig für dich sein. Die Stimmen. In deinem Kopf. Halt! Maul! Du trägst Chaos in dir. Akzeptiere das Chaos. This is Bianca from spinatmädchen.com from Germany. And uh, yeah, you're no stranger to hit shows. You've done Game of Thrones, you've done Watchmen. So how does Moon Knight fit in by comparison? What is so special for you about Moon Knight? Um, well, first of all, thank you very much. And thank you for the interest in our craft and for talking to me. Um, the, the, it, the, for me, the interest in Moon Knight was that the story is driven by the exploration of the character. And so it's a story that is all about, you know, what what this character goes through to understand himself and to reconcile with himself. And for me, that's the most interesting part of those stories. In a strange way, you know, Game of Thrones is actually a story about people less than it is about you know, politics because it's a story about the cost of things on people. And and this is a story about someone coming to terms with his own reality, uh, you know, whatever created this, you know, division within him. And that for me is the most interesting thing about it. And that's what drives everything. Uh, and then also the fantastical um, elements we have to try and tell the story and try and bring like an incredible character that, you know, people have a lot of affection for in the comics. And also a comic that is like visually kind of arresting in a certain way because he's like he's in a mostly white costume. And like it's an incredible combination of visual opportunity and a story that's, you know, uh, really about a character. Mm -hmm. So as a cinematographer, you not only have to, to have a good eye, but you also have to handle a wide variety of special effects on set, as well as visual effects. So how do you deal with that regarding Moon Knight? What is the crucial, uh, crucial difference here for you in your work? Uh, well, that's actually one of the basic things we do when we are like preparing a script is we break down a number of things like what will be a location, what will be a set we will build, and how we will realize some of these like fantastical things. Like Moon, Moon Knight is jumping off a pyramid and, you know, he's going to tackle somebody or, you know, whatever. There's a, there's a million things like we're walking across the desert and we find a tomb and we have a floating scarab in Harrow's hand. Uh, and so you basically try and... Uh, break down everything into all the elements of what they are. And you don't want to lean too heavily on one thing. It does not everything needs to be visual effects because when you can't do everything that way, it'll run out of time and, you know, money to create that stuff. So like we shot the desert material in Jordan for Egypt, uh, and we try to, you know, use our use the most uh, as much location as possible for that. Uh, and it's incredible and it's beautiful. And we shot, you know, incredible stuff there. Things where we have to do things like we're going to be in a giant, you know, chamber inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, well, that's going to be a set. And it's going to be very inspired by elements of the comic, elements of the script that are like trying to bring these things to life. So a lot of it's that and things that will go between visual effects and special effects will go between what is like a physical thing and what is better to have a physical thing and what when a physical thing cannot do that usually is a split. So sometimes we start with a physical object and then it'll become a virtual object, for example. Like Moon Knight might be real during one minute and then once he goes far enough off the building, he might be a digital character for something like that. That's so interesting. Well, in episode one, there was this great moment when Stephen or Mark flees from Arthur Harrow, respectively his henchman, in a cake delivery van. <laughs> yeah. And the action lives through fast cinematography. What was the challenge uh, in shooting this scene? Well, the biggest challenge was, um, well, one, we're, we're making this show in wants to be a film, like a movie every week. And we don't have a schedule of a movie every week, for example. So we, we couldn't take Oscar to the Alps and shoot for two weeks for that sequence like you might do in a film. We had to do all his work in a couple of days. So we had to do a lot of it virtually. So we, the cupcake van was uh, you know, on our back lot against uh, green screen and the second unit shot the backgrounds and the real cars and marrying those things together and planning it all in a way that also for Oscar that he had, he had the real cars to react to. The cars next to him were real. And the people in the in the uh, company van with him, but to sort of plot it all out so that he can then make sense of it, because you know he's not playing the whole scene, really driving a van. He can't rehearse the whole scene, and you know what I mean. So you have to kind of break it up, not just in shots, but to make it make sense for him, so he can do that, and then break it into shots that we, I have to like match the lighting to the backgrounds we have, or figure out what will be virtual, what will be a, you know, digital car, things like that. It's it, it's a very very complex process. To make every shot is like its own little puzzle to figure out how you'll do it. Like for example, the the stuntman jumping off one car onto the back, 
like he lands as a a real guy in our van that continues the shot continuously all the way to the front to wrestle with Oscar, but it begins with a stuntman on a car in uh, on a car in a location, and to match those together and get them all to match is like a quite a tricky process. Yeah, sounds really really tricky, but also so interesting. So thank you so much for your time, and I wish you all the best for your future projects. My pleasure, Bianca. Thank you much for your interest. Thank you.